I've only had the pleasure of knowing him for a few weeks or a couple weeks and, you know, probably talking to him every day. But this man lives with so much grace, um, especially after what happened to him, that this community is not really, we don't, we don't deserve a leader like, like, we're, like we have in Michael Fesser. I'll tell you that right now. We do not deserve, this man, this man, the, he lives with the grace of God. And you guys are gonna hear that in a second. And the first thing, you know, the first way I got in contact with Michael was I, I read, cause I heard about what happened to him, but I read the article and got into the details of, of what happened and just how corrupt that really was. And at the end of it, there was a quote from Michael that said, you know, he still, you know, fears coming to West Lynn, you know, cause of what happened to him. So without further ado, I like all y'all to put your fist up and make as much noise as possible when we welcome up Michael Fesser here to the stage to share his story. Uh, well, um, yeah, uh, this is just different for me right now. Um, I'm just really here to support these guys and try to make change for this whole community and then start making the bridge and the gap from here to Northeast Portland and North Portland. But we want to start right here because this place is the place that um, brought pain and hurt to my family, my friends, and a lot of loved ones. And um, I'm willing to come back here and um, you know try to start the healing process. But we need you guys as the community and the younger generation to stand up and say, we can't have this stuff to happen anymore. And um, these are conversations that you guys have to have with your parents. Your parents, you guys have to have these conversations with your friends because it's just real straightforward. It's just racism. And if you guys can't understand that, then you guys need to ha really have a conversation or come sit into some of the meetings and ride and understand what our kids and what we go through. Um, I had to pleasure to meet with some officers and I want to bring a lot of the young people from Westland and from my community also and um, we learned a lot we've been learning a lot and um, I know the officers have a bad name and things have been going wrong with me and my family but I trust God more than anything and um, he is what leads my life and my family so um, I'm not in fear of coming out here because I'm trusting God, but I am understanding that I have a support team and some people around me that will walk with me and I understand that we're in a better place today. Um, I could not say this a couple weeks ago because this community and some of the higher ups have been telling nothing but lies. And it's time out for me and the people that we walk with to say that that's okay. And so it's not that we're mad or I'm an angry black man. It is just that we want change. And so in that, they just, the community and people want to just understand that something bad happened, you're sorry, let's move forward. But until you can say sorry, we can't move forward because now we're building on some rocky stuff that's been going on in this police department. And I'm just speaking of Westland right now because that's the department that done this stuff to me. And it's just embedded in some of them. And I'm just happy and we really want to hear, I want to hear from the black people that, and other people here that's been in these type of situations because before we can talk about what happened to me and different things like that, you guys have a lot of trauma and a lot of things that you guys have been through living in this community for, I don't know, you know, how many years, however, whatever age you are. So I would just like, we will open it up for you guys to, you know, come and tell your stories. I've met one of my high school basketball buddy right here yeah channel he's somewhere around here he's probably hiding I, I told him he might come up and speak but he was like no 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 fast I was like yeah well you wasn't saying that when I had to pass you the basketball so then he was like yeah you're right so that's Andre channel out there and his family I haven't met them personally but I remember him from back in the days of my order and my family and a lot of people from Northeast Portland are here in West Lynn I'm just happy to that we can walk march and and move the needle but not move it slow we're gonna just start moving at a rapid pace and if there's any questions, anything that you guys want to know, um, we're open for that. Um, we won't discuss everything that we talked to two of the, um, well, the active chief and a couple of officers today. 
because we're in the process of working, but we want to let you guys know that these two officers did take the time and we've met a couple of different times to get out of their comfort zone and me to come out of my comfort zone and us to join up to at least to start to have the conversation, to get the ball rolling. And um, that's kind of what I have to say. I don't really like talking a lot. I like the action to doing it, making it happen. And so we will, you guys can ask questions or before we go on the walk or whatever we're gonna do, but I definitely want to, um, these two guys, man, were like, it, it's just, I, I can't explain it, but there was a young, two young ladies is one of the reasons why I first started coming out here because I, have a, I got a text message and I seen 25 white kids in West Lynn at a protest or a visual about Black Lives Matter. And um, these two young ladies um, did not know that I was coming out, but God had spoke to me and said, go be with my kids. And I was like, um, and this was a Sunday, I think it was May 29th or something. I was like, well, my kids are downstairs. And, and then I'm debating and arguing with God. We're, we're having a debate, I guess, but I knew I was going to lose that one. So I was taking off my slacks, and while I was doing that, I started putting on my pants because I had to go be with these kids. And then I said, well, they can't protect me. He's like, well, I've been protecting you all this time. I was like, okay, I can't. So I told my daughter and my son, we're going to Westland, and we're only going to be there for like 20 minutes. Cause, uh, well, we end up being there for like three or four hours. But the young ladies that done this, um, I think it's Maddie, Yep, she's here, and Matilda. They were in the meeting with us today. So, I mean, it's this young generation, these guys, and why this thing is gonna be what it is, and we're gonna keep doing this. We are not gonna stop because it's just getting old. No, it's not getting old, because this has been going on for too many years, and right now, you parents, you young kids, that when you're not saying something and you see this, you have to start saying it, and be different, because that's what I have to do. I have to be different and have the courage and I have a bunch of guys that was with my Friday group that one of the guys that's a real dear friend of mine is Larry Anderson. He is a retired police officer and I, him and I did not see eye to eye for years. But through that, we have been walking together for over the last 10 years and a, several other guys, but he's one of the guys that came out here with me today. I wanted him in the room with me because he knows the talk because he's been an officer. He's been with these officers. So this is something that we're gonna move forward with and um, I'm just happy to be out here. And let's just keep, keep doing what we have to do. And um, any questions, definitely we'll, we'll, we'll answer or you guys can ask him.